How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology and welcome to your 2020 year ahead horoscope for Gemini, Sun and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. In this video, we're going to be going over all of the major transits of 2020 by each quarter and how they'll be affecting you. And now while there is a lot of astrology happening next year, we're going to be briefly going over the major events so you guys have a general idea of what's going to be going on for you guys this year. Now, if you would like a more in-depth and specific analysis of what's going to be happening for you for 2020, please be sure to check out my website where you guys can purchase a year ahead reading from me where I'm going to be going over all of the specific transits and the big major events that are going to be affecting you specifically for your chart for 2020. And if you like this year ahead horoscope and you also like weekly horoscopes and monthly horoscopes, please be sure to check out my page and subscribe for all of the latest astrology info and updates. And also follow me on Twitter if you guys like to talk about astrology, engage with me as well as a bunch of other astrologers. If you're not on astrology Twitter, get Get on there already. And if you'd like to support me and my work and get access to exclusive content and knowledge about astrology, be sure to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash white light astrology. And now with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the horoscope. So before 2020 begins, as we end 2019, we're actually going to be having Jupiter move into Capricorn. And Jupiter's going to be in Capricorn for basically the whole year of 2020. Now, this is going to be in your eighth house, so this is going to be a pretty big deal, and this is going to play a big role in the Saturn-Pluto conjunction or conjunction that's happening in January and the theme of that that's going to continue out for the rest of the year. Now, Jupiter is the planet of faith, spirituality, good luck. He expands whatever he touches. Jupiter is looking to bring you presents and gifts. The only problem is Jupiter is going into its sign of fall, Capricorn, which means Jupiter doesn't really operate all too well here. And the best way to kind of look at it is, is you kind of have to make do with what you have. Jupiter and Capricorn doesn't have as many resources available to it as it usually would. So it kind of has to make the best out of a, what would usually be an uncomfortable situation. And as we do move forward into 2020, the first thing that we've got going on is Saturn conjoining Pluto and Capricorn on January 12th. Now, this is a really big deal. This is a very big transit that involves a lot of different things. And I don't have enough time today to explain all of it. However, that uh, what we were just talking about with Jupiter and Capricorn kind of making the best out of a, you know, uncomfortable situation. That's kind of like the Saturn Pluto conjunction. Saturn, the planet of responsibilities, limitations, constriction is in your eighth house of, you know, death of taxes, of debt, of other people's money, other people's resources. And as Saturn conjoins Pluto right here, this may be a change in what you have to do or what kind of resources you have available to you. And this is, I wanted to bring this up uh, this way because as Jupiter's in Capricorn going through your eighth house, there's going to have, there's going to be like a way for you to utilize what resources that you do have in a very consistent and a stable way. The only problem is that you may not have the amount of resources above to you that you may be looking for or you might have some issues that are hidden that you might not see and you kind of have to make best with what or make do with what you have and make the best of it so there's kind of like this you know balance of hey while there is a certain sense of responsibility that you're having to take on there is a certain constriction there's a certain limitation that is now flatlined for you guys Jupiter and Capricorn is making the best out of that situation and then the next thing that we've got going on in 2020 is Mercury is going to be retrograding in Pisces. Now, this is the first of three Mercury retrogrades we're going to be having this year. And just like the one that we had in 2019, this one's going to be a little bit confusing. Mercury retrogrades are always a time of reflecting, rethinking, revisiting, reviewing anything with the RE in front of it. And so as Mercury does retrograde, this is going to be the time to kind of look over things again. And as this is happening in Pisces, this is going to be happening in your 10th whole sign house. Now, the 10th house is all about your career, your vocation, uh, how the public recognizes you, how you see yourself. It also has to represent a lot of bigger life stuff. The 10th house can kind of do a lot of different things. And this Mercury retrograde in Pisces might have you kind of rethinking where exactly it is that you are doing in your career, where your hopes are. This is going to be conjoining Neptune, so there are going to be some illusions that you'll have to play out here. But for the most part, it's just a Mercury retrograde in your 10th house. You might see some miscommunications within your career or with your boss or something like that, but not the biggest deal. But what is a big deal is the next thing that we've got going on on March 1st is going to be Saturn moving into Aquarius. Now, Saturn's not exactly done going through Capricorn. However, there's a very big change with Saturn going into Aquarius. Saturn is the planet of limitations, of structure, of discipline. You know, it likes, it's a very cold and dry planet, so it likes to consolidate. It likes to bring things together. It likes to shrink them down. 
And as Saturn moves into Aquarius, Aquarius is also Saturn's home sign, so it operates very well here. However, it is an air sign, so it changes the dynamic from fe things feeling so restricted uh, physically to things feeling restricted more mentally. Now, as Saturn does move into Aquarius, it's going to be moving into your ninth whole sign house. Now, the ninth house is all about spirituality, beliefs, where you want to go, like long distance travel, your faith, uh, higher education, as well as publishing. And so as Saturn goes into your ninth house, this is going to be a time where you get to focus more on where do you need to find more discipline, have more authority. You may be struggling with limitations or authority figures within this ninth house area for you guys. But the big thing about Saturn being an Aquarius is that this is a time to either connect or disconnect. And it really just depends on what's going on for you personally in your chart. But as Saturn goes into Aquarius, this isn't, you know, the, this isn't just the, you know, all of it. We're going to be coming back to this later on because Saturn's not done in Capricorn just yet this year. But then as we finish the first quarter of 2020, on April 4th, we're going to be having Jupiter conjoined Pluto. Now, this transit is kind of weird to talk about because you have the planet of, you know, Pluto, like death and destruction and chaos and whatnot, conjoining Jupiter, which is a pretty positive planet. Now, the good a way that I like to look at this is, like I said before with Jupiter and Capricorn, using, you know, what you have to your advantage and kind of like making the best out of a crappy situation. Jupiter conjoining Pluto is kind of realizing that, like, you may not have all of the tools that that you have but that also might be the realization where you kind of figure out what you do have may actually change something and that's not going to be an overnight change this is going to be a process over this year but once we get into april is when you're going to start figuring out hey what can i do to make this change How, what can i do to make my situation work and especially for you guys with this being in your eighth house this is going to deal with some uncomfortable things now, as we do move into the second quarter of 2020, we have eclipse season beginning. However, the nodes are going to be moving signs right before the eclipses begin. Now, eclipses usually kind of t take your attention from whatever you're doing and make you focus on a certain situation. And that can be sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's just more of kind of like a fatalistic quality of astrology where things kind of just happen. However, as the nodes move from Cancer and Capricorn into Gemini and Sagittarius, there's a really big energy theme that's kind of changing. We have the nodes going from your second and eighth house to your first and your seventh. So this is all about you and all about the relationships in your life. With the North Node moving into Gemini, there's going to be this very big focus and very big pull towards understanding yourself more. What information and more, you know, understanding of yourself can you get right now? This is about asking yourself the right questions, seeing yourself through different perspectives. This is the North Node, what we're dragged towards, what we're looking towards, what we're wanting to consume. And as it transits your first house, which is all about you, there's going to be a lot of realizations that you'll have about you. Now, the South Node is moving into Sagittarius, the sign of our beliefs, the signs of, you know, vision, of quest, of journey. And as the South Node, the object that kind of represents like, hey, what are we wanting to release? What are we wanting to stray away from? But kind of use in order to go towards that North Node energy. And that's going to be in Sagittarius of what we believe, what our thoughts were, where our faith is, kind of letting go of expectations and focusing on the information at hand. And this is happening in your seventh house of relationships. So so you might have a new understanding of yourself that allows you to let go of past beliefs that you've had about relationships that might not have worked for you. But then on May 12th, that is when we're going to have Venus start to retrograde in Gemini. Now, this is one of the bigger highlights of this year. And Venus, the planet of love and value, beauty, attraction, she's wanting you to, you know, magnetize yourself to the things that you like. She's wanting you to indulge and party and dance and have great sex. And Venus is all about fun. Now, when she's in the sign of Gemini, she's focused on stimulation, focused on information, focused on communicating, on talking, on speaking. And as Venus retrogrades, this is where we kind of have a value shift in what we are speaking about, what we are communicating, what we are addressing, and what information we are receiving. Now, this is happening in your first house about yourself, so this is going to be a time of maybe a makeover, maybe a different look for yourself, a new way of looking and valuing yourself. And, you know, to be corny, it's kind of like, you know, loving yourself a little bit more. But then as we end the second quarter of 2020 is when we're going to have the Mercury retrograde in Cancer. Now, we had a Mercury retrograde in Cancer as well last year in 2019, although it did start in Leo. So you could definitely see a lot of the similar themes of what happened in 2019 play out here in April of 20, or I should say... Uh, June of 2020. Now, when Mercury does retrograde, again, this is a time of rethinking, of revisiting, going over things again. And with the sign of cancer, this is focusing on our needs. This is focusing on what's important. This is focusing on what we need to protect, what we need to nurture. And this is happening in your second house. 
Now the second house is all about money, what you own, what you physically possess, what you have. And so as Mercury retrogrades through here, this is gonna be kind of rethinking, re-going over specific finances. Now, as we get halfway through 2020, we begin the third quarter, we actually started off with Saturn going back into Capricorn and retrogressing into Capricorn. Now, like I said before, with Saturn and Aquarius, there's a new challenge and there's a new theme presented with where are our responsibilities, where are our obligations, where are our limits, and where are our walls that kind of you know border us in a little bit. And as Saturn moves back into Capricorn and moves back into your eighth house, this is where you have to go back and kind of address anything that you didn't handle or that you still have lingering on from Saturn and Capricorn. So this is looking like handling debts, handling obligations, kind of going back and, you know, finding yourself in a situation where you might have some roadblocks again in that eighth house area. Now, I would suggest if you guys aren't too familiar with what the eighth house means in astrology, it means a lot of different things. And so I would suggest looking this up and so you guys get a better understanding of what the eighth house can look like for you in your life. But as Saturn moves back into the eighth house, we have to go back to focusing on these problems. And then on July 25th, Mars starts to enter shadow. So at this point, Mars will be in its home sign of Aries, will feel mostly charged up. But as it enters its shadow, this is where we're going to be going back over this part in the zodiac here uh, coming up soon in 2020. Now, when Mars does enter shadow, a lot of the stuff that you're doing, that you're thinking, that you're deciding then is going to come about when Mars goes retrograde. But during this time, you're going to feel energized to do something, to put yourself into something. This is happening in your 11th house of friendship. So you might find yourself focusing on groups or collective endeavors and being with other people. However, this might also be straining your energy. You might be putting a lot of energy into here and you might be wanting to put more energy in there and you may not have that reciprocated. And this is where we get to start utilizing that new information, utilizing that stimulation that we might have got or searched for and found with Venus retrograding in Gemini. We get to use that information and actually start to put it out there, receive more of it and start to move forward with that value shift that we had. And then from August 4th through August 27th, so basically the whole month of August, Mars is going to be slowing down as it begins to uh, retrograde, and it's going to be squaring Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. Now, this is a pretty hard transit. It's pretty rough, and it's probably the main thing that's happening this year. And as Mars squares Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto, you might find yourself having limitations and feeling like you're in a roadblock, because as Mars is in Aries and wanting to move forward, Saturn, Pluto, and and Jupiter are kind of putting a halt to it. Now, Mars is in Aries, so it is in your 11th house at this time. So this does have to do with groups or collective endeavors that you're wanting to join or that you're wanting to pursue more. And that square to Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in your 8th house, you might not have the resources to do all of the projects or to do all of the things with the people that you want. And that can be really slowing your role, or you might have a lot more, of ob a lot more obligations given to you to where you can't spend as much time with other people that you want. But then as we end the third quarter, we have Mars stationing retrograde. And as Mars retrogrades through your 11th house, this is going to look like changing your energy and your direction and where you focus on when it comes to friendship, when it comes to bigger groups of people. So that can be co-workers, that can be any type of hobbies that you're, you know, invested in, any type of collective group. And this is Mars. This is, uh, you know, Mars can bring anger. Mars can bring frustration. There might be some fights here. There might be some dilemmas or conflicts. And as Mars goes retrograde, this is the time where the energized planet that's usually moving forward is moving backwards. So it's a time to kind of, before you act, think for a second about what you're wanting to do. You're not going to have as much energy during this time of the year, and that speaks for all of the signs. Mars retrograding in Aries is like not having the energy to do stuff. So you might feel, you know, a little bit isolated or alone where you can't go out with your friends as much as you'd want to or go out with the other people as much as you'd want to because you're focused on whatever obligations are kind of uh, holding you back. But then we start the fourth quarter, which is the big grand finale of 2020. There's a lot going on. And the first thing is, is that once Mars is retrograde, it's going to be squaring Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter still. And that's going to be happening from September 29th till October 18th. So there's still a lot of time to really reflect on what is holding you back and what obligations do you need to address in order to, you know, put your energy where you're wanting to put it. And then, of course, we have the third and final Mercury retrograde of 2020, and that's going to be in Scorpio. And I'm 
I'm recording this right now in October when Mercury's about to retrograde in Scorpio again. So what I would say is if you want to know more about this time, reflect on what happened to you between October and November of 2019 because there's going to be a lot of interesting and similar themes. Mercury retrogrades in Scorpio are, of course, a Mercury retrograde is rethinking, revisiting, and reflecting. With this in Scorpio, this is a lot deeper. This is a lot more concealed things. There's a lot of hidden stuff coming out to the surface. So Scorpio also affects your sixth house. And your sixth house is of work, of routine, of your health, your day-to-day -day habits and employment. And as Mercury retrogrades right here, this might be revisiting what you're kind of doing for everyday work. Where are you spending the most time? And where do you need to rethink where you're really investing your mental energy? And then once we get into November, we have Jupiter conjoined Pluto for the third and final time. Now, Jupiter did conjoin Pluto again while it was retrograde, but I didn't want to talk about that much because I wanted to talk more about when Jupiter conjoins Pluto again for the third and final time in November, because this is kind of like really utilizing and seeing the result of how dealing with what little you might have had this year, how that can really change stuff. It's like you, you kind of have to make do what you have, but it might work and it might actually do something. A good analogy would be like, you know, like a field doctor, like let's say you're in a, in a war and you get shot and some doctor comes up and all they can really give you is some you know like something to clean off your wound or whatever and you're not in the hospital yet it's going to take some time to get there but by the time you get to the hospital the doctor's like hey thank god that you know one field medic gave you this you know like cleaned up your wound otherwise you would have got infected and died or something and that's kind of like the way to look at the situation that it may not be the best but whatever comes out of it is going to change something that is really good and so that's what to look forward to with jupiter conjoining pluto for the third and final time in November. And then the next day, Mars stations direct and begins to move forward in Aries. And this is after handling any obligations, responsibilities, walls, anything that was going on with Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter in your eighth house. Like that's when that all gets done. That's that Jupiter Pluto conjunction. Mars stations direct. You begin to move forward and you can start actually going back over all the things that you were wanting to do and that you kind of, you know, couldn't do because you were held back with that Mars retrograde. This is the time to reapply it, go after it again, and kind of like address the problem. And then as we get into November as well, we'll also have the second set of eclipses, this time with the sun in Sagittarius, where this is more focused on, again, for you guys, relationships. And as the sun's through your seventh house and we have these eclipses, you might find yourself more focused on what relationships are at hand. And this might be a time of not necessarily letting go of relationships, but maybe letting go of what your beliefs are around relationships. What can change? What space did Jupiter and Sagittarius last year make available for you to enjoy this year? But then the grand, grand finale of 2020 is at the very end in December, we're going to have both Saturn and Jupiter move into Aquarius and they're going to conjoin each other just a few days later after that. And this is a huge deal because as Saturn moves into Aquarius and it stays in Aquarius for the next three years where you get to focus on your beliefs, on where you're going, on what you want to do, on what you need to learn. And with Saturn there handing you responsibilities, Jupiter there is kind of like expanding this area, bringing a lot of fun energy into this area, bringing luck and opportunity and a sense of faith but with more opportunity comes more responsibility and that's the way to look at this Jupiter Saturn conjunction and it really is a bigger deal it's a long-term thing like it's a it's a pretty fucking big deal you should look into Jupiter Saturn conjunctions if you don't know about them yet um, and this like I wish I could explain more to it but I had to make it simple and short for this however that's basically how we're ending 2020 and we go into 2021 with a whole new set of rules basically and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this checking me out uh, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Again, if you're interested in getting a more specific analysis and a little bit more detailed on what's going on for you in your life, feel free to go to my website, book a reading with me. I'd love to absolutely go over what 2020 is going to look like for you. And with that being said, thank you guys so much and I'll be seeing you next video.